Hello everyone. Happy Friday the 13th. Today is Frequently Asked Questions for Beginning Beekeepers, episode 34. And today this is a very important and very timely topic because we're going to talk about whether or not I need to treat my bees for Varroa destructor parasites. Now here's the thing. This is an arm landing board. This is a Flowhive 2 and it has bee weaver bees in it. It's a split I did this year. This one also has bee weaver bees. This is a Flowhive 2 8 frame, which is their 6 frame edition. And look at the landing board on this one. This is a standard beehive, an extended landing board, and what's on it? Dead bees. Here's the thing. You can see that there are cappings there. What kind of bees are in this colony? They are Saskatraz bees, and I've been uh, observing this line of bees this summer. And we have three hives with Saskatraz bees in them. One of the problems I'm noticing is, now it's normal, hygienic behavior, varroa resistance, they would be casting out dead bees, but not on this level. Here's another Saskatraz colony, and this is the ground right in front of the landing board. They are casting out and pulling out pupae that have Varroa destructor infections. Varroa destructor is a parasite that attacks bees. They reproduce in the uh, brood frames and specifically they really like to go after drone cells because the drones take longer and spend longer in the cells. There's more resources for those Varroa to reproduce. Now normally I leave my bees and have for many years I've left them to deal with Varroa on their own and they survive. Now, I don't know about these Saskatraz bees. Look at that landing board. It is strewn with remnants. They're overwhelmed. The ground in front of it also demonstrates to me that they're overwhelmed. This is a brand new swarm that's been put in here. So they've been here for a little over a week. We also did another swarm this week, which I showed in a previous video. And this is on a temporary stand, and that's a Flowhive 2 Standard Edition. And I put screens in there to reduce the entrance so they can defend themselves because we're coming into a dearth period although right now and that's why this video is timely we still have resources coming in and the bees are still building so this is the time to intervene if you have colonies that require treatment that are not naturally varroa resistant on their own you need to do something about it so the most frequent question i get about that is fred what treatment do you recommend what would you use if you had to treat your own bees well this is the first year that I've actually started treating and I'm using oxalic acid vaporization which is considered a soft acid but look what's going on here when they cast out their infected brood that's not even hatched these are pupate then we have this yellow jacket wasp here gathering a little meat pellet there that it's going to fly away with and it's going to feed its brood because the wasp itself can't even eat meat what it can do though is deliver these little chunks of meat to its developing larvae so this is what you find on the ground if you don't get out now this was filmed right at sunrise that's when i can see the most going on around the hives i look at landing boards i look at the ground in front of them we have no more skunk problem normally a skunk would probably come through here at night and clean all of this up but now it's left to wasps and ants but the real topic today is why I use oxalic acid vaporization. And not only that, how do I deliver it into the colony? So I'm going to demonstrate that. And you're even going to, at the end of this video, get to see inside a hive and see what the bee's reaction is when oxalic acid vaporization is implemented. It's really a sublimation. We are vaporizing oxalic acid crystals and I'm using this. This is an Oxivap 110. That means it runs on 110, 120 AC current. You need an extension cord and that's the oxalic acid right there. Get a reputable source for your oxalic acid. You're also going to need to protect your respiratory system, protect your lungs. You need cartridges and you need a well-fitted mask so you don't breathe it in. You can also wear safety glasses if you want to. I'm just showing these here. These are by DeWalt. And you're going to need a little bag of damp cloths. Damp with water, nothing else. That's what I'm going to use to close up the entry boards. And I'm going to show you how I use the Oxivap. This thing is really simple. That is 230 degrees Celsius on the bottom there. And all we're doing is watching that top number match it. When it's up to temperature, you can deliver it. 
Now this, we're going to block the entrance. I'm going to go in from the back. This is what I've done to all of my hives. I have a quarter inch hole drilled in them. And this is a slatted rag. So there is a quarter twenty threaded two inch long thumb screw here. I use that to keep the hole clear and to make sure it sticks all the way through the wood material so that I can deliver oxalic acid vaporization from the bag. And that is half a teaspoon. That's good enough for two deep brood boxes. Here's a close up of the label for the oxalic acid. Now when you flip this thing over, be ready because it comes out right away. Now I just wanted to show you that. Normally, I want you to go ahead and stick it in that quarter inch hole first, then flip it. But that's to show you how powerful and quickly it sends a jet of vaporized oxalic acid into the colony. Now what's happening in there? It's going everywhere. It's also why you need to close off the entrance because the bees are gonna fan it around with their wings and they are going to get that into every part of the hive now. Do you want your honey supers on right now? No, you don't. So this is what you do after you've drawn off your honey supers. Or you have to get the bees out of the honey super. You have to put a vapor barrier between the honey super and the brood boxes. Now, if you've got brood up in your honey supers, they won't get treated. So you really need to do an inspection first and see what's going on. Now the treatment period, that delivery was about 20 seconds. After that, you're gonna leave it closed up for six to 10 minutes. Then you're gonna have to pull that wet cloth away. Now I put these in and if I have it in the vertical position, that shows me it's a colony that's been treated. If I have that thumb screw turned flat, that means it's yet to be treated. You have to do three cycles. I did this on Monday. I'm gonna do another one this coming Monday and another one the following Monday after that. Now it still leaks off a little bit here. That thing is hot. So you need to have a brick or a piece of metal or something non flammable to set it on. And you also are going to want some nice heavy gloves that can protect your hands because you're going to need to pull that uh, ceramic cup off the top there and it's going to be hot too. Here's a man lake slatted rack. Again, I've drilled these holes from the back so we don't have to walk in front to do the treatment. Nice long extension cord, put it in upside down and then flip it right side up and you won't get a bunch of vapor puffing out at you. And remember too, the reason that that threaded thumb screw is two inches long, we want to make sure that it gets right through there and that there's no blowback. Now this is where I'm going to demonstrate what it looks like inside a colony when you deliver oxalic acid vaporization. This is my observation hive. It's eight deep frames. It is in tandem, two frames each. Look on the left there, you see my thumb screw. And I'm going to pull that out. Now this is two by material, which means it's an inch and a half thick. So I needed that two inch quarter 20 threaded thumb screw to keep that hole open. Otherwise the bees would propolize it, put it in upside down. We're going to flip it right side up. And now you're going to see what happens to the bees. The bees are going to rush away from it. Here goes the puff. Now what happens? The bees immediately want to get that vapor away from themselves. So what they end up doing is circulating it throughout this hive. Now this has an entrance, inch and a half in diameter, that's been closed off. And you can see that there's some condensation building up right away. And look at the bees scurrying away. Now what's gonna happen is they're gonna circulate that through everything. What time of day do you wanna do this? Well, you wanna do it early in the morning when all the bees are in there. Or if it's really cold morning, you wanna wait until evening when all the foragers have returned because you want maximum exposure to the bees. Now the oxalic acid vaporization delivers it as a vapor, but it'll land on and adhere to surfaces all over the interior of the hive. Now what happens then? Varroa destructor, the little varroa mite, is going to walk on that and the pads of its feet are going to absorb the oxalic acid and it's toxic to the mite. It is not toxic to the bees. How many dead bees were at the bottom of this observation hive after treatment? Zero. Not one dead bee. So the advantage is I can deliver oxalic acid vaporization to every hive configuration that I have, including the observation hive. If you have the wand style observation, I mean uh, oxalic acid delivery system, sometimes bees fall onto that or burn or get stuck on it and they die when you put that in the front. The other thing is I can't put that wand style uh, iron in all the hive configurations. So I've gone to this Oxivape 110. This is a brood frame. The bottom two frames in this colony, you can see there's open brood. You can see there's capped brood. And now the bees, what are they doing? 
well they've really started to relax so this vapor is still sealed up it's still going throughout the colony and the bees are not freaking out anymore so this really shows that when you're delivering OAV it is not that traumatizing to your bees a lot of people will say well if you put a respirator on and you have to protect yourself like that just imagine what it's doing to those bees they must be suffocating in there well looking through this observation hive window shows that once the initial blast of OAV goes in OA then uh, they don't really care and we're going to keep this closed up again six to ten minutes after that delivery we're going to make sure that it settles on all the interior surfaces including on the bodies of the bees and look at this down lower left there where we delivered it the bees have reassumed their positions down there and they're just moving about normally it doesn't mean they're happy about it but this is not a stressed super agitated colony of bees they don't appear to even care after that initial puff in and now it's circulating throughout the entire colony they're doing okay with it they're relaxed now the other question is you're gonna hear a term called efficacy what's the percent of efficacy how many varroa mites will that kill well I did some testing here before we did any treatments I have at least two uh, hives that I could compare that have removable trays in the bottom so I clean them up pull the trays out and then I looked at the varroa that were being groomed off naturally into the trays maybe three or four into the tray but you're gonna see later after I did this treatment there were hundreds in the trays the bee weaver colonies there remained only about five or six landing in the tray but the saskatrass bees had hundreds following the treatment so 12 hours after the first oxalic acid vaporization treatment which was monday september 9th the tray for the saskatrass bees in a flow hive 2 was covered and this is the normal distribution just the way it landed there was no oil in the tray they fell to the bottom dead you can see some of them look really dark almost burnt and it was very effective now we don't back off we have to do it in seven day intervals and we have to do three of those treatments so if you're going to treat for varroa you really need to do it now why is that because if you wait the bees right now are building up their winter resources it is already friday the 13th september the 13th there are still resources in the environment there is still time for the bee colonies to build up their resources but if you wait until those varroa are at maximum numbers and then you try to treat their recovery can be very slow because look at what those saskatrass bees were doing they're pulling out both their drone larvae and they're also pulling out their worker larvae so there is an impact not to mention the disease that comes with varroa destructor also your colonies can rub elbows we have bees that land on the wrong landing boards we have bees that walk into the wrong hives especially foragers that are loaded with resources and they can be carrying varroa destructor to each other so i'm worried about the saskatrass bees uh, infecting other swarms that i've collected my bee weaver bees are holding their own the saskatrass bees needed help but you know what the breeders of the saskatrass bees said that that would be the case that they're showing some resistance but they do require treatment so my preferred treatment is oxalic acid vaporization. My preferred delivery method is the Oxivape 110. Thank you for watching. Get out there and check those landing boards.